good to see you this morning. It's good to have Jackson with us this morning. Amen. Praise God. Handsome young man over there. Good to have you, Jackson. Let's go. I want us to pray for Jacob Brown this morning. I want you to agree with me. I'm going to pray. And I want us to believe God for healing her ears. How I many you know that Jesus can heal ears like you he can heal a headache? Amen. Amen. God can heal just like He can heal a, a headache. He can heal cancer. He can heal AIDS. He can heal anything. Amen? Amen. So I want you to uh, not hope with me, but believe with me for a miracle. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you in the behalf of Jacob Brown. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we lift her name up to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you said in the book of James, the fifth chapter, you said, pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And Lord, we just pray for Jada Brown in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We lift her name up to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Father, you do hear her name. And Father, we ask you in Jesus' name to open both of her ears. We ask you to heal both of Jada's ears in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Infirmity, I speak to you. I bind you and I break your power off of Jada Brown's ears. Go from her and leave the earth in Jesus' name. Ears, be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We believe it's done. Amen. How many of you believe with me that Jada's ears are healed? Amen. Amen. Praise God. We are believers and not doubters. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. How many know that God is good and He is wonderful and worthy to be praised? Isn't he? Amen. Praise God. Let's just stand for a moment. Lift our hands and worship. <coughs> we worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship and praise and magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for what you've done in Jada's ears. Thank you, Father, that Jada, Jada Brown's ears are healed. We believe right now in Jesus' name that the infirmity is gone and that Jada's ears are healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing Jacob. Thank you, Father. We worship and praise and magnify the name of the Lord. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the devil is defeated. He comes to naught. He is a zero. And the Lord Jesus Christ is our hero. Amen. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for help. We thank you for prosperity in the spirit, of finances, and in the body and in our minds. Amen. We thank you for divine protection. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. As we quote the word of God, you will stand by to see it good in our lives. Amen. And we worship you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> Praise God. I want you to go with me to Hebrews, please. Chapter 11. I want to talk to you this morning. And I don't know how it's going to come out. But I trust the Holy Ghost to pray it out. Amen? Amen, Amen Russell. Amen. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 11. I want you to look at verse 24. I want to talk to you this morning about the consequences of sin. I mean, you know that sin has a consequence. Amen. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24. Now, well, let's just look at 23 through 25. Hebrews 11, verse 23 through 25. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I trust you, Lord, to speak through these lips of clay unto this people. Thank you, Father, for giving illumination to my mind and direction to my spirit. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost that indwells me 
Thank you for the teacher that indwells each and every one of us that's been born again by the Spirit of God. Lord, we look to Him to put us over in the life, to put us over in life. Thank you, Lord. We look to Him in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for utterance in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, the 23rd verse of the 11th chapter of Hebrews, the Word of God says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. How many know that there's pleasure in sin? Amen. Sin is pleasure. But I want you to notice that verse of Scripture, verse 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You know, sin is pleasurable on the flesh. You hear it? But sin has a cost to it. The pleasures of sin does not outweigh the wages of sin. How many of you know the Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Sin always has a penalty. Always. And the penalty of sin or the wages of sin is greater than the pleasure of it. And a lot of times we just look at the pleasures of sin because this flesh wants, your, can I be honest with you, your flesh wants to sin. Amen. Amen. Your flesh wants to do wrong, but it's the man on the inside that wants to serve God. It's the man on the inside that wants to please God. When you and I trip up in life, what where do we trip up at? Your flesh. As, as the Bible says, there's no good thing in this thing. Your flesh is not born again. Now, one of these days we'll have a new body. But you don't have a new body now. And until that day comes, the man on the inside, you, the real you on the inside is to dominate your flesh. If you don't dominate your flesh, your flesh will dominate you. Amen. And that's what keeps baby Christians. Amen? So I just want to share with you the penalty of sin. Sin is a destroyer. And we're going to look at that. We're going to look at some things. But sin is pleasurable. There is pleasure in sin. But it's only for a season. It's only for a little while. But it has a great consequence. And the consequences of sin, now listen to me, is greater than the pleasures of sin. And a lot of times, we just look at something right now, how good this is going to be. But it, it can cost. Amen? Now, with that in mind, I want you to go with me to the book of Genesis. Genesis is the book of beginnings. And I want us to start with chapter 2. Oh, Jesus is so wonderful, isn't he? Genesis chapter 2. Don't you just love the Lord this morning? Genesis chapter 2, I want us to look at verse 15 through 17. And then chapter 2, verses 18, all the way through chapter 3, through verse 21. Genesis chapter 2, look at it, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Listen to what God is saying in verse 17. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt what? Surely die. Surely die. Now I want you to keep that in mind. God created man. Who did God tell this to? Adam. He did not tell this to Eve. 
He told this to Adam, and then Adam told, in other words, told his wife. Look at verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper for him. And out of the ground the Lord formed, God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name there. I want to, this just splashed to me and I'm going to get back to verse 20. In other words, God created everything, but Adam named everything. Uh, you hear it. Now this is what I want to tell you. Before Adam sinned, and we're fixing to get into it, the consequence. We're talking about this morning the consequences of sin. Before Adam sinned, his mind worked 100%. He was so intelligent. But how do you know that I heard, and I know you have too, because some of you have been around longer than I have, that we only use, what is it, 5 to 7% of our brain? Am I right? It's, it's, you only use, in a genius, we have geniuses in this world, and they're up to like 10 or 12% if I remember correctly. Adam's brain, before he said, his brain was at 100%. He named everything. He could name it. Okay. Now, isn't the, you see what sin did to the human race? It was the consequence. Sin is ugly. And we only look at sin on the surface. But sin can cost you and I everything. A moment of pleasure or a moment of sinning. Somebody out of rage all of a sudden was doing just fine. And out of rage someone's murdered. And that person spends the rest of their life in prison behind bars. And misses all their dreams. Sin, that's why the Bible says, be you angry and sin not. Amen? Somebody says, I have a problem with anger. Well, you need to take care of it. Rebuke it. Amen? Because it is of the flesh. And if it got out of hand, it could destroy you. There's been people that let their anger get out of hand because anger is one of the works of the flesh and it destroyed them. Not only, I mean, it destroyed families. It destroyed lives. And not only that, you can go on over to other, to drugs and alcohol and other things, or adultery or whatever. Sin is a destroyer, and it looks good on the outside. But the consequences of sin is greater than the pleasure of it. Remember that. I got that over there. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost earlier, right before I came up here. It is so good to have the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. 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 And see, we only think about the pleasure of it. We never, the enemy never wants you to look at the consequence of it. Amen? But can I tell you this? Repent immediately. You see it and miss it. Repent immediately. Don't wait until you get to church. Repent right then like God forgive me and keep a tender and a tender conscience toward God. Amen? Sin's a thief. But Adam, I just wanted to stop there. We won't start it. Verse 20 now of chapter 2. But his brain worked at 100%. He was so intelligent. Look at uh, verse 20. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, to all the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper. King James says, help me for him, or a helper for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. God is a master surgeon. Oh, man. I mean, even when this dude's asleep, he opens his flesh and takes a rib out and closes the flesh up. You mean to tell you who's a master surgeon? Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we believe those ears are open in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you touch her, you lay hands on her in Jesus' name or in just say, Thank you, Father, these ears are healed. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus is the master surgeon. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Verse 22. And, and the real which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And I will say it. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Beautiful creature. And Adam said, 
This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked and the man and his wife and they were not ashamed. Now before I get into the penalty of sin, I want you to I'm take, take you back for a minute and share something with you. God created man. He saw that man should need a helper and he created woman. They were both naked. There was no, listen to me, they knew no fear. They knew no shame. They were righteous before God. Amen. Amen. There was no sin. Now, I'm going to let in, you in on this because the Bible doesn't say. God just wants you to get the, the important thoughts out of the Word of God. Amen. We don't know how long they stayed and lived in that garden before they sinned. They could have been there a million years. They could have been there a thousand years. It could have been 10,000 years. It could have been 500 years. We don't know. But they stayed in that garden to keep it and to dress it. Till finally, we're fixing to read it uh, in chapter 3, the fall of man. Now, I want you to stay with me for a minute. Don't check out on me because you need to get this. Where does sickness come from? Where is the origin of sickness and disease? Where is the origin of it at? Because in God, listen to me, Jesus never suffered sickness or disease, did he? No. And if, when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus said the works that I do, it's not mine but the Father. Right? right. So uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see the will of God in action when we look at Jesus. Whenever it was necessary to bless humanity, and Jesus set aside these natural laws as we know about it, whether storms, sickness, disease, raising the dead, to bless humanity, God's on the scene. Correct? Well, where did sickness originate at? Where did it come from? It had to come from somewhere. Because before Adam and Eve, sinned, before they sinned, they didn't know no sickness. They didn't even sweat before they sinned. There was no sweating. There was no being afraid. I want, to think, I want you to think about the world they lived in. There was none of that. They had it made. Now let's look at verse chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said, the serpent said, now you know it's coming again. I'm going to stop here because a lot of people freak out. Back before man fell, Adam and Eve, they talked to animals. When we get to heaven, the lion and the, and the, and the lamb will talk. We will, we will talk to animals. Horses will talk in heaven. Now that blows your mind, doesn't it? Well, see, in the beginning, before sin tainted everything, they talked to animals. There was no sin. Now that's hard for you to understand that because you don't think of that because of our fallen nature. But in heaven, the lamb will lay with the lion and the lion won't devour it. Now the lamb won't, the lion will devour it. But in heaven, they will get along. In heaven, everything is alive. Our, uh, Dean Braxton, matter of fact, I, I mean, I want to go back and listen to him. He was the man that had a, uh, I think it was a, he was going in for a kidney stone, and he had an infection in his blood, and he died for an hour and 45 minutes, and he went to heaven, and he talked, and he even said some things. He said, man, everything's alive in heaven. And he said, he said to talk verbally is a waste of, is really, you don't have to. It's just really a waste of energy, how he put it, because when you look at Jesus, it's like telepathic. You know what he's saying and what he's saying to you. He said everything. He said the trees are alive there. You can communicate. Everything in heaven is alive. Now, heaven is not like this world. <coughs> and see, and a lot of times we picture that. Now, don't get me wrong. There's amusement parks there. And uh, there's, uh, there's, you know, it's a city. The Bible says in Hebrews here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come in the book of Hebrews. 
Paul talks about heaven. It's a, he talks about it's a continuing city. And it's a city with trees, with parks, amusement parks. And God gives us our desires. I mean, if you want a, a place out in the country, there's a place for you there. Some people like condominiums. There's condominiums there. I was uh, listening to a lady that one time that was called up to heaven. And she was talking about the amusement parks there. One of the, one of the rides there is, is not even connected, you know. And it just goes in near there. And, you know, of course, here in this world, we have to be connected to things. Amen? We can't go in the air here or we would be going somewhere next week to somebody's funeral. But in heaven, it's not like that. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Here's what the Holy Ghost just gave me. Heaven blows people's minds when you talk about it here. Because your mind can't comprehend that. It blows your mind that just some things I just said. You can't comprehend it. Because your mind always thinks of physical and natural things here upon the earth. But in heaven, it is so awesome. God is awesome. That's why we have miracles today. Jesus walked on water. It's a miracle to walk on a substance that's impossible to walk on. But it can be done. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We, are, we should be miracle thinkers. We should be possibility thinkers. Instead, you know, well, I just don't believe it. No wonder nothing happens good in those people's lives because they don't believe nothing. Except uh, the new birth. And they stop there. No, I believe all the word of the living God. And Jesus is a miracle worker. Amen, Donald? Diane? He's a miracle worker. Praise God. So, I'm fixing to get back. It was natural for animals to talk to Eve. It was natural to hold conversations before sin came into this world. It was natural. Everything. Oh, thank you, Lord. Here's what the Holy Ghost just gave you. You remember the donkey speaking to the prophet? Balaam? Yeah, you remember that? Holy Ghost. Remember the, uh, the donkey saw that angel that drew his sword? And he was kicking that donkey and getting mad at And the donkey spoke to the prophet. And he spoke back to him. What the, what the, the, he, the God loosed that donkey's tongue to speak to a man. Well, before sin come into this world, it was naturally to talk to animals. How did I get off on that? I just wanted to share with you. That's why he didn't run off. <laughs> I mean, if we're somewhere, you know, and uh, we're at the zoo in the world, and all of a sudden they start talking to us, we're like, what? <laughs> and you go tell somebody that an ape talked to you, they want to put you somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, no, he didn't need to go nowhere. It was natural in that day and time. Now, look at verse 2 again. Chapter 3. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Who told her that? Her husband, not God. God told Adam. Adam told his wife. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now see, God, we already read that God told Adam and I, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Well, Adam, he has this beautiful creature, it's this woman that's made for him. He says, listen, I need to talk to you about something that God has already told me. God says, don't eat of that tree. And Adam probably added a little bit to it. Don't touch it. Matter of fact, don't even look at it. Stay away from that tree. And you know, else, you know who else heard that? Because Satan was already cast to the earth by then. He's the one that corrupted the earth. And so that's why the Spirit of God moved upon the earth and recreated it. Now we go on reading. Now look at verse 4 of the third chapter. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. See, he turns the word of God around. Have you ever talked to somebody and you give them the truth and they say, well, that ain't what it means. Yeah. <laughs> you give them the Bible and they say, that ain't what it means. What, what kind of spirit they're listening to? If it's the Word of God, we need to hear it. Amen? Now look at verse 5. For God, the, the serpent is speaking. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. And, and when the woman saw 
that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Not everything that's pleasant to the eyes is good for you. And the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes, now look at verse 7. Remember what God already said to Adam. What did he say to Adam? In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay, now look at verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They died spiritually right then. When God, see, a lot of people think of physical. Now, don't get me wrong. Listen to me. Spiritual death is the parent or mother of physical death. If they would have never ate of that fruit, they'd live forever without dying physically. See, God didn't create man to die. The Bible says in Corinthians, and you know your Bible, in the book of Corinthians, the Bible says, what is the last enemy that will be put underfoot? Physical death. God didn't create Adam and Eve to die physically. He, cre he created them to live. He told them. He gave them a choice. God gives you and I a choice. I can choose to serve Him or I can choose not to. You can too. I choose to serve Jesus. Amen. He's the best thing since life's bread. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my Lord and Savior. And I heard somebody say it earlier. Forever. Jesus Christ is my Lord, my Savior, my King, my God. He's everything. Amen? Now, I want you to look at verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Man has been running from God ever since. Yeah. Verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? He knew where he was at. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked. I hid myself. Now, see the consequence of sin? He was never afraid before. Listen to me. Sin has a sin always has a penalty. This was a great penalty we're fixing to look at. Great. The first penalty of all is spiritual death. Spiritual death is separation from God. They were right with God and they died spiritually. And the Lord, listen, look at verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Because I was naked, I hid myself. Verse 11. And he said, the Lord said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, Now he starts to accuse the woman and God. <laughs> and the man said, The woman! <laughs> Y'all men know where we would be if it wasn't for women, don't you? We'd be in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> I better stop there. Is there more women in here than me? <laughs> anyway, uh, and he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this? that thou hast done. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me or deceived me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. See, the serpent at one time walked upright. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. 
In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, thou hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Now listen to what God is saying now. Curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of, of it all the days of thy life. Not some, all. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Thou shalt eat the herd of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. I want you to notice something. He never sweated before. How long did the sin that they committed last? Five minutes, maybe. The consequence of sin is always greater than the pleasure of it. Somebody says, yeah, but that looks good. It could cost you your life. You want to know where the origin of sickness and disease come from? Here. Sickness and disease never came into the human race. Excuse me. Would have never came into the human race if Adam and Eve would have never sinned. Sin is what brought it on in. And they call You know why? Because they brought in spiritual death, which is separation from God. When they ate of that fruit, and God said in the day, not the next day or not 900 years, He said in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. They died spiritually right then. Their eyes were open. They knew they were naked. Now they're afraid. Now they're running from God. They died spiritually. And now because they died spiritually, they, they end up dying physically. And of course God lengthened the lifespan physically because there weren't many people on the earth. But after the earth started populating, he slowed it. He slowed the lifespan down. Because if we all live 900, 800 years now, there wouldn't be nowhere to put us. Amen? Sin has a consequence. And that sin only lasted five minutes to eat a fruit. Or maybe not that long. The mother took a bite. And when he, when he took the bite is when it happened. She took the bite. But when she gave it to her husband, he took the bite all of a sudden. There it was. Well, it could have been a minute. The pleasures of something, the eye, and listening to the devil, the consequence of sin is always greater. Some people die. If they would have just, there's people I know in the spirit. Now, you might not have known this. I knew in the spirit, a, a, a sermon that I was preaching, that people needed to be here to get that. But they weren't here. They was out probably boat riding or hunting. Now, I'm not saying none of that's wrong, but if you put it before God, it is. Anything you put before God is wrong. Amen? Amen? No, you put God first. I remember hearing about a man that had, a, 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 I don't know if it was a boy or girl, he was an evangelist. He was out speaking at a church. True happening. He was out speaking at a church. Now, this is for all this technology we have today and cell, cell phones and so on. And he was holding a revival at church. He got word that one of his his child was near death. So he was fixing to pack up and head back. The Holy Ghost spoke to him and says, Son, you take care of my business and I'll take care of your business. So he stayed there. He finished out the revival meeting and his child recovered and lived and not died. Now, if he wouldn't obey the Holy Ghost, now healing is right. Healing is right. But see, uh, Healing is right, but healing is conditional. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Here's what the Holy Ghost just gave you. Salvation is right, but salvation is conditional. If you don't forgive, neither will you be forgiven. Okay? Now, uh, healing is right, but if that man would have left after the Holy Ghost spoke to him, he says, you take care of my business. In other words, God was saying, you finish up this revival. You preach the gospel where people are saved, because I'm still in the saving business. I'm at all this. You know what he was talking about when God said, if you take care of my business, I'll take care of yours. Now, if he would have left after hearing that, his child would have died. See, healing is right, but it's conditional. That is, if you and I serve God and we stay out of sin. And the moment we sin, listen to me, the moment you trip up and you sin, repent rightly and Lord, forgive me, I'm sorry. 
Amen? Uh, you know, uh, if I'm sharp with someone, uh, and, I, and I felt like I might have been rude. Let me ask you. I remember one time, my first assembly of God church I was in, uh, I thought that maybe I hurt someone's feelings. And I went up to this lady. I said, I want you to forgive me. And she looked at me. She said, well, I wish I was as sensitive as that. Well, if you're going to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, you got to live by it. Amen? Amen? If you live by it, the Holy Ghost will talk to you right then and say, you shouldn't have said that. And I said, I'm sorry, Lord. I always say you're sorry. If you can't say you're sorry, there's something wrong with you. Amen? Amen? Right. There's something wrong with you. If you cannot say you're sorry, forgive me, there's something wrong in your spirit. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Well, the Lord is good. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, the consequence of Adam and Eve's sin, listen to me, ushered sickness and disease. And first and foremost, what it ushered is spiritual death in the human race. Why did Jesus say in John 3, 3, a man must be born again before he can see. Why? Because it's his spiritual nature that's all wrong. I'm going to say something to you, and I'm going to blow your mind, but that's okay. Don't be religious on me. It isn't what man does that sends him to hell. It's who he is. Can you hear your mind? Right? Man can't help what he does because his nature is all wrong. When his nature is born again, then he wants to do right. Somebody says, you need to quit doing that. No, they need to get born again. Then they will quit doing that. Yeah. See, it ain't what man does. It's what he is. He can't. Man can't help to do wrong because his nature's wrong. His nature is separated. His spiritual death. What did John, uh, John chapter 8 verse 44 say? Jesus is speaking in John's gospel, the 8th chapter, the 44th verse. He's talking to religious people. Jesus said, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father will you do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father. But I want you to notice this. Jesus is speaking to religious people here. The Pharisees, the religious bunch. Who did he say was their father? Well, their earthly father might have been in a grave or in their will. Jesus is talking spiritually here. He said, you were your father the devil. What did he mean? Their nature was all wrong. They hated Jesus. They hated Jesus. I mean, they set a woman up in the 8th chapter of John's gospel that was committed in the act of adultery. They caught her in the act and left the man and brought the woman. They were setting Jesus up to see what he would say. Religious people will hate you. Amen? Jesus is talking to religious people and he says, spiritually, your father is the devil. And the only way to make God your father is if they were born again according to John chapter 3, verse 3. That's why we need to be born again because Adam and Eve brought spiritual death into the human race. That's why you can't join a church, put your name on a, on, a, on a piece of paper, or shake a preacher's hand, make you say, you have to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and, and repent of your sins and confess Him with your mouth as your Lord and Savior and eternal life comes into you. You're a spirit man. And a man is born again. I wants to do right. Nobody was ever going to change my mind. Well, I was going to be the world's best foot player. And I already had men with money that was going to take me around the country and put me in tournaments in it. I said, I've got it. I love my life. I get to make money doing something that I was talented with. Till one day, I came in contact with the Son of God. And I thought, well, I don't want to do that no more. I want to follow Jesus. Amen. And I've had people that, that knew that I was gifted. Because I give. I mean, it is a gift. Now, there's no people who play all their lives that can't play. But, People used to think, what's wrong with that guy? They thought I was crazy. They thought I was actually crazy because I quit playing nine ball. No, I'm not crazy. I got saved. Amen. Amen. So the world won't understand it. But when you get saved, your life should change because of the life of Christ inside of you. And if you're the same old creature you've always been, well, I doubt you know Jesus Christ. Because when He comes in, the life changes. Yes. Amen? Now, the consequence of sin, that's what we're talking about. 
Now go with me real quickly to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Are you getting this? Look at John chapter 5. Look at verse 10 through 18. And the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, and we know who cured him. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. And he answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude being in that place. Afterwards, Jesus finds him in the temple and said unto him, Behold. Oh, I've got to stop here because something just came to me. Look at verse 14. And then I'm going to show you the consequence of what we're talking about. Afterwards, Jesus finds him in the temple. Jesus healed this man. He heads to church. It's amazing how many people I've met over the years that they say they're Christians but don't like coming to church. I mean, if I ask them or send them something through text, they get mad nearly about it. About coming to church. Say people want to come to church. Amen. It blows my mind how many people that don't want to come to church that say they're Christians but they get mad at you. I don't understand that. Do you, do you? Because the Bible says he found him in the temple. He said, man, it's time to go to the house of God. Jesus delivered me. Amen. The woman that was in had the spirit of infirmity and loose gospel, she was bound together for 18 years. And I was preaching a message one night on that. And the Holy Ghost showed me, said, she's at the right place at the right time. If anybody had an excuse to stay away from church, was this woman that was bound together for 18 years with the spirit of infirmity. We give our body so much. We let our body have what it wants. I've been to work, church, with kidney problems years ago. I would, because I don't believe in calling, and I would go to work because I believe in God for a healing. Amen? And I said, well, if I stay home, I'm going to make me look like I'm, I'm weak in faith. Now, that was just me. I'm not saying that for everybody else. I'm just me. That's just how I am. And I said, I'm going to work. And I go to work. Hey, I go to work for a headache. I rebuke headaches and stand against them. And people would call in and wouldn't be sick. Well, I'm sick, can't come to work. I thought, that's lying. I'm not going to call in to my employer and tell him that I'm sick, but I'm not because now I'm lying and now I'm sinning and now I open the door for sickness to come into my life. Amen. Sin has a consequence. <laughs> and people don't believe it. It has a consequence. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Here's what the Lord just gave me. It doesn't always pay off at the end of the payoff end of the month. But sooner or later payday comes for the faithful and sooner or later payday comes for the disobedience. And I want to be there when payday comes for the reward of obedience. Not for the other. Amen? Amen. Now, this man, look at verse 14, and afterward Jesus finds him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Look at this. Jesus is speaking. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. And the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him Lord. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him, the religious bunch, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. They honored that day more than they honored God. But Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto, that means up till now, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Look at it. Here's what I want you to get, though, in verse 14. Afterwards, Jesus finds him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. See, what, in other words, Jesus is saying this. 
You're made whole. Quit sinning unless something else comes into your life. Why? Because sin has ability. Sin, oh, thank you, Lord. I'm going to give this. I'm just going to give you what just comes to me, okay? We're all adults in here, amen? I remember one time years ago, I wasn't saved at the time. Remember when AIDS come out? Remember? And that's a sexual transmitted disease. And I remember hearing, and I don't know if it was in Jackson area, I went in church, we just heard about it, maybe in the bars or the pool halls. And I remember hearing that some man hooked up with some woman, and she wrote with her lipstick on that, on that mirror that was in that motel room, Welcome to the world of AIDS. And she was gone. Now that man, not only him, but multitudes more, wouldn't have had that disease if he would have just stayed away from that sin. Amen. He met someone, maybe at a bar or pool hall or whatever, good looking and everything right. The flesh. Your flesh is flaky. And my mama used to tell me, and I'll tell you, and you already know it, that beauty is only skin deep. It's what's inside. And so, uh, and so uh, he woke up and he saw that in lipstick. Welcome to the world of AIDS. And that's incurable. It said, well, it's curable through Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb. There's things that would, we would have been prevent, would have been prevented if we would have just stayed right and lived right. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Some things. Now, don't get me wrong. Some things is our fault. Some things is the devil that we need to minister to a spirit that's come. Like the, you know, I, I heard a minister say this, but I agreed with it before he said it. The mentally insane, some people are scared of. I'm not scared of them because I believe the mentally insane, you catch the spirit out and they're healed instantly. I believe it's a spirit that causes that insanity. Amen? Now, I want you to know, Jesus, Jesus said, Jesus said there in verse 14, sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. Sin brings ugly things into our lives. I know I've sinned in times past, and it's costing me. I had to pay a consequence for it. You're all, the, and that was good when I was over there. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That's what came to me. I never said that before in my life. The consequence of sin is always greater than the pleasure of it. The pleasure of sin could be for a season. It could be for five minutes. It could be for a minute. It could be for an hour. It could be for a week. But there's always going to be a consequence and it's always going to be greater than the pleasure of it. Now, what brought sin into the world where did it originate from? I like something that I heard that John Alexander Dowie said. He was a healing evangelist way back yonder. John Alexander Dowie said, Sin is the offspring of its father Satan and its mother sin. Excuse me. Sickness and disease is the offspring of its mother sin and its father Satan. That's how sickness and disease was, came into the human race is through sin. What messes us up is sin. Somebody says, well, I'm going to tell a little lie and because I'm telling this little lie not to hurt no one. Well, you just, you just broke God's commandment and you just hurt yourself. And if you don't repent of it speedily, we have to be careful. Sin has a consequence and, and it can destroy us. Sin is a destroyer. And so Jesus said, sin no more. Sin no more. Lest the worst thing come unto thee. Sin opens the door. Now you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't dare. Now I know I would. Unlock the door and open it wide open and go to bed. How many would open your living room door? Now listen to me. Would open your living room door wide open or put something against it where it wouldn't close and you go to sleep? Is anybody in there, would you do that to your house? Because you might have roaches, you might have a uh, skunk, you might have an armadillo, you might have a possum, you might have a robber. You know, so a robber goes by and says, there's a door, the door's been open two hours, I just bad. They're going to be nosy, someone that's up to nothing, no good, you know what I mean? No, we close and lock our doors. 
Well, you know what sin does? It opens the door for bad things that come into our lives. Let's close the door on sin. You sin, you miss it, repent of it. According to 1 John 1, 9, it, you know, if we confess our sins, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And the Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Now, with that in mind, I know we've gone a little bit further, and I still have some verses, at least two more verses to give you, so if you come back tonight, I have some important things to say that goes with this. And one of the things I'm going to share with you is Proverbs chapter 17, talking about a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drives up the bones. How you are spiritually determines how what happens, how your outward man goes. Amen? So come back tonight let's, and let's get into God's Word. With every head bowed and every eye closed, please, no one looking around.